Hi, my name is Jeff Herrick. I'm a soil scientist with the USDA ARS at the Hornada in Las Cruces, New Mexico. And today I'm going to demonstrate a couple of different techniques for measuring water infiltration rates into the soil. We need to start by pre-wetting the soil. We want to do that for a couple of reasons. One is so that the, the soil basically comes together if there are any cracks in it. We also want to make sure that we don't disturb any crust that's on the soil too much. So if we just press the ring straight into the soil, it's going to break up the crust. And, uh, and we want to keep that in place just like it would be when the rain's falling. So the way we, we wet it up is we just put a, a towel down, just an old, old towel, piece of a rag, and, um, and we just pour water on top of it. This way we're not disturbing the soil surface, but we're slowly wetting up the soil. So you might have to come around and, and, um, and continuously add water. You want to add just enough so it doesn't run off too much, but keep that, keep that towel wet and it'll just keep soaking it down into the soil. Once I've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to remove any litter I've got there on the surface and I'm going to press my ring in and I've got it marked here at three centimeters or a little over an inch down into the soil to that mark. Gently press it in. Okay. And I'm going to do that with each of my rings. So in this particular case, I happen to be interested in what the average infiltration rate is under this pecan tree. So once I've got that in, um, the next thing that I'm going to want to do is fill that to a standard depth with water. I'm going to put it, want to put in one inch. And what I want to do is, again, I don't want to disturb that soil surface, so I take a piece of plastic and I set it in there. I pour the water in. This is just a plastic grocery bag. And I very slowly pull it out. And when I do that, it keeps that soil surface from being disturbed because if it gets too disturbed, it's actually going to um, crust up. At this point now, I'm just going to measure the amount of time it takes for that entire inch to soak into the soil. Now the other alternative is to do the same thing except instead of measuring how long it takes for one inch to go into the soil, I'm actually going to use a bottle full of water with a tube in it. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to keep the level of the water in that ring at the same height the whole time. And the way it does that is I got this little tube in here that extends down into the bottle. It's about to here. But basically what it does is as far as the, the water in the, the bottle is concerned, if it's coming out of this lid, it's only going to come out to the level of that tube. See those bubbles going? That's water moving out from that cap, which I just had loosely capped, into the ring. And it's going to keep bubbling until the water inside the ring comes up to the level of the bottom of that tube. And then it's going to stop. Alternatively, if I've got the, the level of the water in there to where I want it, which is three centimeters, and I'm just going to double check and see. Now I'm going to push that tube down so the water stops bubbling, just barely. And then bring it up to where it just starts. The water is now moving out of that bottle into that ring at the same rate that the water is moving out of that ring into the soil. This little tube in here is basically making the water in here in this bottle feel like it's the same uh, level as the water in the ring. And so this is how fast the water is moving into the soil. Not very fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record right now what the level of 
the water in the bottle is. And as long as this bottle has straight sides, I can come back half an hour, an hour, after it's gone at least a full three centimeters into the down, which in this case is going to be about six centimeters because it's a smaller diameter bottle. And I can just measure how far it's gone down and how much time and calculate the infiltration rate. The other advantage of this is that I can actually run a whole bunch of infiltration tests at once because again, I don't have to be sitting here waiting and watching for that water and being there at the moment that it actually hits the bottom. So you can see now I've got all three rings set up. I actually could have set up 10 or 12 of them at once because all I really need to do is set that top band, record the time for the top band, and then come back after I've had at least six centimeters of drop in there, and it can be more, that's fine. This, we're basically at the rate where infiltration is stabilized after we've saturated that top layer of soil. And uh, I can come back and, and just record the amount of time elapsed and how far down the water level has gone. These three rings actually very nicely illustrate the incredible importance of replication. Don't just do one test. You can see that this one is bubbling very quickly and in fact it's already dropped about four centimeters. Whereas the one in the front is bubbling very slowly. Whereas this one appears to be kind of intermediate between the two. So again, when you're measuring infiltration, you can't really just do one ring. And what this, this uh, using these bottles helps you do is complete a lot of measurements very quickly, all at once.